Oh, 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 oh. It looks like our pal David Dobrik is in big, big trouble, isn't it? Big, big trouble, it seems like at the moment. This has been bubbling for a while. Um, it seems like there's been a free, there's been a free headed or free pronged attack at, towards James Charles, Jeffree Star, and David Dobrik for the entirety of lockdown. It feels like, um, at one time, it feels like, um, you know at one point in time it felt like it was over for each of those gentlemen and um sometimes it isn't right sometimes you think it's over for these people and they suddenly find a way to sort of uh rescue themselves from the pits of despair but this time around it feels like unfortunately the powers that be have decided that david dobrik is a sacrificial lamb for everybody involved in for the most part you know when you look at the allegations it does look like he probably did what he's accused of being done but <sighs> It's a messy thing. So this is a following from BBC. David Obrick quits app after as, as associated accused of the R word, of course. Here says YouTuber David Obrick has stepped down from his app that he co-founded following the allegations from his former associate. One woman who appeared in the video on Mr. Dobrik's channel says she was um, R worded, as you see there. Another person involved during the filming. Um... Mr. Dobrik, who has almost 90 million subscribers on the platform, denies any wrongdoing, but the claim has led brands and investors to sever ties with the influencer. Mr. Dobrik rose to fame through prank videos, sometimes a collaboration with a number of other YouTubers called the Vlog Squad. During the coronavirus pandemic, he stepped back from posting regularly on YouTuber in order to launch his own photo app, Dispo. Um, a recent investigation published by Kat Tenbarg at the business news website called The Insider detailed the woman's account of the R word in 2018 by a now former Vlog Squad member. So effectively, he's being judged for the crimes of people he was associated with. And I guess the whole premise behind it, I would assume I haven't read too much into it, is the fact that he maybe orchestrated the scenarios because he's part of this weird trend on YouTube where they do these kind of elaborate pranks that aren't pranks and are pranks. They're sort of not real or they're scripted. You know what I mean? It's, well, they're sort of obviously not real, but and, and sometimes they're scripted. Um and he's basically been judged in that regard off the back of it so he didn't exactly violate the woman himself directly it seems like he's not being accused of that he's just being accused of sort of putting the girls whether they're underage or of age i'm assuming they're of age because if it wasn't they'll definitely say but they're of age he's putting them in situations that are basically allowing them to be violated in some way shape or form it continues here several ties since the claims support the app and this Dobrik has collapsed, venture capital firm and leading investor in the app, Spark Capital, announced it would sever all ties with the company. In light of recent news of Lost Squad, the co founder of this, but we have made a decision to sever all ties. So they're, you know, pulling out a big amount of cash in an app like this, but which was meant to be the next big thing. It's sort of like a, a next, sort of like another photo sharing social media app where you essentially take these, um, F f disposable image quality type pictures <laughs> the whole idea behind it is that you're meant to live in the moment so you take a picture and you don't see it until the next day so it allows you to kind of be most engrossed with the things around you but you also get this memory of this time in history that you had which occurred in 24 hours before you know kind of a spin on that um it looked pretty cool at the time uh of me saying this i i did sign up to be a a bet be a test user but i didn't get through on that one and then i signed up on the waiting list for the app to be open and judging by all this kerfuffle that's happening i don't think we're gonna see the app um available anytime soon i don't think it probably will eventually come out but they're probably gonna let it breathe a little bit more and maybe put out a video clearly disavowing david dobrik and then moving forward because they had a whole new york time spread recently where they all dressed up in turtlenecks similar to steve jobs and shit to like a school a college court of sort of like photo thing so they're going to have to do a lot of work to sort of get this sort of smart off their name. But hey, Mr. Dobby then announced he would step down from the board at Dispo to not distract from the company's growth. As a YouTube influencer, the Dobrik made millions of dollars through the sponsorship deals. <laughs> they always mention this sort of stuff. They're sort of like um, secretly hoping that more people pull off. It says, pull out of his, I'm sorry. Another one says here, Hello Fresh, EA Sports, HP Mac, or among other brands, I dropped him the allegations. In the account published by the insider, a woman alleged she was violated during the filming of a Vlog Squad video in 2018. She reportedly said she was given alcohol despite being under the legal age of 21 and 
became drunk to the point of unconsciousness. Later, she said that she was involved in a um, group of calls, uh, which involved a Vlog Squad member, which she, when she was too intoxicated to consent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The video, which does not explicitly show the alleged incident, was published on Mr. Dobrik's channel and later removed. While other client, while our client is appalled by a misconduct attributed to the former member, assuming it is true, my client denies any wrongdoing. Dobrik told the lawyer said consent is something that's super super important to me Sturbeck added in a recent video post on one of the YouTube channels whether I'm shooting with a friend or I'm shooting with a stranger I make sure everybody I'm putting out I have approval from the person but the funny thing is so far we're seeing all these images and videos coming out of him doing pranks that people want that that really coach with in the beginning but it's a classic thing in these sort of things like when you're the top you're obviously untouchable and people kind of want to get next to you because you have the the stardust on you i've never really been a fan of the guy i've always hated this flipping smile thing that he does with his tongue sort of sticking out and that annoying laugh that he has um elaborate pranks that are all scripted you can cut me out of that shit maybe it's an age thing but i've just never given a crap about it but it was quite clear that he was when he was a hot shit no one had a bad word to say about him apart from trisha Paytas was the only person but you know for valid reasons people didn't really take what she had to say um with any sort of weight on it because she had her own concerns her own issues that she was dealing with but she'd been obviously proven right now as history has sort of progressed or you know as the story has basically developed but this is one of those classic cases where no one called out this behavior when they were standing right next to the guy and the moment that you know there's a lot more allegations coming out from strangers people that are not necessarily going to gain any i'm not going to game but you know people that have like maybe not not much to lose from this situation decide to come out suddenly everyone's got a moral compass suddenly everyone's got ethics that they stand by suddenly people are now put in in the suddenly now people have woken up to the fact that what they filmed with the guy or what they witnessed themselves at the moment was incorrect and i don't really have any time for it i hate people that kind of you know witness fuckery but don't say anything in the moment and in the moment that person is sort of being kicked you know and flogged and they're being stripped of all their sponsors and their livelihood then they then step in and decide to deliver the final blow um he was you know this behavior that he was doing was known for a while there's there's archive footage that's being leaked now of vlogs from years ago that are basically showing them you know either insinuating that they did something untowards or laughing in the midst of it really doing some cr crazy shit that you would probably maybe at the time was acceptable because of the nature of youtube and what it was but looking back on it through the this, today's lens and how sensitive people are and how people are very prone to you know um the idea of how you know sketchy consent is in these sort of occasions because alcohol is involved clout is involved all these really murky things that sort of muddy the waters it really shouldn't be muddied really and, and truly but at that moment i could imagine a lot of that stuff could be done with you know yeah you're taking advantage of groupies you're sort of promising them clout and exposure and fame and this is all this nasty stuff that kind of muddies the waters and kind of um blurs the line between what's right and what isn't right but in my opinion it's pretty clear that you shouldn't be in any sort of position number one where you're buying alcohol for girls that are obviously underage and then filming that footage and putting it on youtube to monetize it that's just insane first of all um the fact that the girls are even there in the first place is nuts but again they're young adults it's not as if they're children so it's not as if their parents can stop them from going but we definitely have to be put in the pot we definitely have to progress in culture where maybe the idea that a girl will travel to another state to go hang out with a youtuber and drink loads of alcohol in a hotel room and fill content maybe isn't the best of ideas but again hey we are where we are but still in that sense there should be a sense that because part of me thinks the big problem with this sort of stuff it's always like the person that's being filmed is the butt of the jokes it's not as like everybody's in in the joke that's kind of the issue that i have with all this stuff it's like if you're gonna go around and do a prank channel at least make everyone have a good time it feels like everything is done at the expense of the ladies that are, or the young girls that are going there to meet the guy right they're going there to meet their hero their guard is down they may be manipulated whatever's happening right it's the fact that they're not even trying to make it a good experience everyone's walking away from this feeling a bit yucky feeling violated right feeling like they're taking advantage of and that's the one thing that i don't actually get because for the most part all these people that are going there with the exception of a few you know clout chasers everyone's a fan diehard fans right people that would legitimately you know give this creator their last you know their last dollar if they had it to support them even if they shouldn't but you know the sort of fanatical fans that are going to be riding for you you know come rain or shine so when these guys take advantage of their own fans this way that's when i kind of get a bit like you know what 
it is what it is if the game decides to kind of take everything away from you it is what it is you've you violated number one rule which is to never take advantage of your fans and you have and now you're in this crappy position and you know he probably got too high on his own supply thought he's untouchable started to get reckless started to take too many risks with his content and again uh, like similar to twitter right i'll just assume there's certain content now look through nowadays lens the same way how you know people look back at you know um cowboy movies and the way that women and minorities were treated and think, right, wow, you could never make a movie like that now. Even movies made in the early 2000s, you know, you look through it, you know, through the prism and through the lens of today's culture. You just can't get away with that sort of stuff. So imagine what it must have been like in the, you know, five years ago in terms of the prank, you know, um, culture that exists on YouTube and shit. You can't get away with that sort of stuff now at the moment. It just doesn't run anymore. It's not funny. It's not interesting. People are going to get called out from it. You'll lose a lot of things going forward. And it just... It just is what it is, and he is in this position mostly down to his own um, error here. Of course, here's an article here from The Verge, YouTuber um, David Dobrik parts ways with disposable camera app in the midst of it. The app as well itself looked pretty cool, I thought, in itself, in terms of how it operates, the idea. Um, it's fairly novel, right? Um, even though I think there's a few apps on the app store that do a similar sort of thing that allow you to kind of take um, free 35 millimeter esque sort of pictures. The idea that you had to develop it over time and you see the next day was pretty cool. Um, they have a pretty cool merch store that they have here too with some nice little items. Um, they post some interesting stuff on Twitter and we're lucky, but. You know, again, all fucked up due to some reckless behavior from the group that he was involved in. And I think there's some comments actually from the fans themselves that really give you an idea as to how conflicted everybody is with the story. Because for the most part, from what I read also, again, maybe at the time of recording, it seems like he didn't do anything directly, but he kind of, I guess, profited and maybe orchestrated the scenarios that led to people getting taken advantage of. And this is a post here of him, you know, of the ad of itself a dispo that's obviously you can view here on his insta on his twitter profile Whoa. that's music because it's obviously got music on it it's kind of a you know a well done sort of trailer for the app itself he's got the makeup on to make him look very old i guess you know remembering fondly the moments that were captured on the app itself pretty well done and in the comments below they've got all these accounts screenshots of you know people can you know basically sharing some of the experience i think it alleges looks like it's an image or a screenshot of somebody sharing their experience with David directly that he then replies to and says, sorry, it was at the end. Okay, I respect your wishes. The video is down. It's to, the, the, the tweet says, this is a text message for all you who are defending him. Remember, just because he does stuff in front of a camera doesn't mean you know him in real life. He could be put in the face of a brand. He also don't bash the victim. It was scary enough to come out for them. The cloud's defending him right now. The insider article out and the receipts are over as well. How the F are you still denying this? You can't still think you're right or good person. Making a video called Let's Talk and turning off the comments is not talking. Trust me when I say this isn't going to age well. It's him obviously laughing. I think this is a threesome clip, right? I just had a threesome and I think we're all going to jail. <laughs> It's hard to take stuff like that, you know, at face value, I guess, because it may be a stuff said as, as a joke between friends. But when you then marry up with that article and what people are alleging and the evidence on video, that's the thing as well. A lot of this stuff is them just telling on themselves. There's so much like risky and risque, questionable bits of content that involves young girls that you're like, oh, this is a bit odd. Luckily, it's all girls that are overage. If it wasn't, this would be this would be a whole lot of a different situation. More tweets here. David titles the video. Let's talk. Claude is able to comment. That's due to his apology video that he put out suddenly into grandpas. Some of the air being a little bit risque with their comment. Mad things in it, but so far it looks like it's over for the dad for the lad. Uh, the app dispo itself is out. A little bit of an article here from Mashable. And again, man, um, I don't know. I, I wonder if we just live in a culture nowadays where maybe the idea of having groupies just isn't. I won't say having groupies isn't um, not conducive to modern day life at the moment. It just isn't, especially when you consider, you know, when you read accounts of what actually groupies got up to. You read the Keith Richards autobiography, Stephen Tyler autobiography from Aerosmith. You see, you know, as kind of maybe you see how vital they were in the scene and in the culture in terms of, you know, great artists and, you know, uh, 
subcultures and movements and stuff right they played an active role in terms of you know the rise and fall of certain bands and shows inspired songs and many many things um groupies at that time and i think maybe now the idea of what a groupie is has sort of changed maybe because of the demographic and what's kind of acceptable because again you have to imagine back then as well it wasn't as if these rock stars were only getting together or hooking up with ladies that happened to be the same age as them it wasn't the case some of the people that involved in there were underage at that time and it wasn't you know it was kind of a thing that people just did um maybe nowadays we just we just passed that and we sort of moved on and we just have to kind of accept the fact and if you're somebody of note you just can't get yourself in the position where that is ever the case because you never know what's going to happen a few years later down the line how culture may change and how things might look different but i think at the heart of all this personally again similar to the crystalia situation regardless of what you think of the history story itself and who's right who's wrong at the heart of this what i think is the issue is a lack of respect i think the fact that these guys don't show these girls that come out and meet them even if they do want to actively sleep with them and hook up or whatever it may be any bit of respect and show them an actual good time and make them feel good and just provide the fun out a day out for them in general is what leads to what it leads to right the desire to maybe film viral content which is that which again is um which kind of it feels like again that they're not in the joke they just kind of want to make the joke at that person's expense is what leads to the situations they're not treating their fans with any sort of level of respect any sort of decency and it sort of leaves the stuff up to open interpretation because I'd imagine if you're a young girl and you're going to meet these people who you think are your heroes it might be confusing coming back even though you actively willingly went there with the idea of sleeping or hooking up with one of the members or one of the vlog squad guys it could definitely make you feel a little bit confused when you leave and you feel like hold on was i was i put in a position where i was coerced was i purposely given drugs and alcohol in order to get me in a position where i would maybe acquiesce a little bit more what actually happened there? even though you went there with the sole intention to do whatever you need to do the fact that these guys didn't treat you with any sort of respect didn't sort of try and want to show you a good time just wanted to get the viral content out there get their you know pp's wet and whatnot not it sort of leads into this really murky place that we're in now at the moment where he's effectively being you know tried for the crimes of somebody else involved in the crew now don't get me wrong he's got a lot of responsibility he has a camera he's a grown-up but also malarkey he's putting the content together he's highly in a certain way he's orchestrating maybe the whole scenarios but it's just wild that all of this could be avoided if these guys were less dicks right if these guys were just treat the girls with more respect this could be avoided instantly but they don't and i guess maybe that's the difference between the the groupies of old and groupies of now is maybe more so less with the groupies and more so with the actual artist and the kind of figureheads involved they don't actually treat them with respect they don't treat them with um any sort of reverence that they're meant to be treated with which is really odd when you consider that they're going to be your evangelists they're going to be your sort of advocates when you're not around right you show some of those girls a good time they're going to be the ones that are going to be singing your praises, you know, until they're flipping gray in, it, gray in the hair. Do you know what I mean? They're going to be your fans for life. But instead, you say what you want to say here. It goes back to their small town. Scenes are small. The word travels around that so-and-so is a creep. So-and-so is a rapist. So-and-so does this. So-and-so is an abuser. And all of a sudden, the entire narrative around your group changes and it's a whole different affair. And I think that's essentially what ended up happening with this in this regards. Um, again, unfortunate um considering um you know their place in youtube history and all that sort of stuff and law but again i'm not surprised the guy's always had an annoying face to me it looks you know um that cackle uh the giving away the cars thing is always you always have to question people that are like excessive with that sort of stuff there's definitely something that they're hiding i don't know what it is but those sort of like rambunctious acts of sort of charity especially that sort of stuff like cars and whatnot it's just it feels a little bit odd in me in terms of me it feels like you're buying friends it's like you're buying silence i don't know it just feels a bit odd maybe i'm reading too much into it but again i think it's a wrap for david dobrik unfortunately